my struggle to learn English. Hello, my name is Ariel. I am a student of English literature, and this is my story. I want to tell you about my life in London and my fantastic teacher. You can read my story and learn English with me. It was a beautiful summer day. I was traveling on a train, and two women were sitting opposite me. They were speaking English, but I didn't understand much. I was studying English, but I was a beginner and didn't know many words. I started speaking to the women, using basic English. The women understood what I wanted to say, and that made me happy. I told them I wanted to learn English. The women told me they were from England and were going home from a conference. Our conversation lasted about ten minutes. The next station was my stop, so I said goodbye. The women gave me their address and phone number, telling me I could visit them in England. Then we said goodbye. After this meeting, I worked on my English every day. I translated texts and watched films in English. In six months, my English improved a lot. It was good, but I wanted to learn more, so I went to London to study English. When I arrived in London, I joined a school. My first lesson was on Monday. I met my teacher and other students in the class. My teacher was a young and kind lady, very nice and humble. We introduced ourselves and then started the lesson. Our teacher asked us about our general knowledge of the language. She told us she could teach us through a very effective method of learning English. This method was simple, we would not study from textbooks but would use English a lot in our daily lives. This approach turned out to be very effective for me because I didn't like studying from textbooks, they confused me. We talked about what is important when learning a new language. Our teacher told us that language is a tool for communication. We need languages to express our ideas and thoughts. So, when you learn a new language, the best method is to use it to communicate. This is what we did in our course, we spoke and used English a lot. Many students try to remember new words and study grammar rules but don't use English for speaking. They study the language but don't use it. Of course, you need to learn new words and grammar, but you don't have to study them, you need to practice them daily. In this course, our teacher wanted to show us a simple and effective method for learning vocabulary and grammar. I liked what she said. Our lesson continued as we spoke about our hobbies and what we like to do in our free time. We spoke in pairs or with our teacher. I enjoyed taking classes and was happy that this system of learning turned out to be very good and effective for me. I went to school again on Tuesday. One of the students asked an interesting question, what is the best way to learn new words? Our teacher told us there are many ways to learn new words, but the most effective way is reading. When people read, they learn new words in their language twice as fast as people who don't read. It's good to read for at least 30 minutes every day. Our teacher showed us what to do to get the most benefit from reading. First, the book or text you read must be interesting to you. Enjoying the book is essential. It could be a nice story, fiction, or non-fiction, whatever interests you. Don't read texts that aren't interesting to you, as you might get frustrated. Choose a text that is interesting and appropriate for your level. When you see a word you don't understand, look it up in a dictionary and learn its meaning. This helps you understand the text better and increases your knowledge. You don't have to write the word down, it will get locked in your brain, and you will remember its meaning when you see it again. 
reading also has another great advantage. When you read, you learn new words and see how each word connects to other words in a sentence. You learn how to link words correctly. This way of learning new words is very effective. Try it, and you will see how fast you can learn new words. Then we continued with the lesson. We talked about the situation in England and the best jobs for students. This was good for me because I wanted to get a job. I wanted to do something in my spare time after school. I asked other students if they knew where I could find a job. They told me to go to a job center which offers many jobs, especially for students. This was good news for me. After school, I went to the job center. I didn't know what job I could do, so I asked the lady at the job center. She told me they had good jobs for students, like being a cleaner or a waitress in a cafe. I told her I had no experience with these jobs. She said my English was good enough to work in the cafe. The training was not difficult, and I would have more chances to speak English than being a cleaner. She told me I could start my job on Thursday. This was good for me. I was happy to have a job where I could practice English. On Wednesday, I went to school again. There was a student in the class who was quieter than the others. He was from South Korea. When our teacher asked if we had any questions, he said he had a problem with pronunciation. He knew his pronunciation was not very good, but he didn't know how to improve it. He didn't speak much because he was worried about his pronunciation. He read and watched films in English a lot and understood well, but he wanted to improve his speaking. Our teacher said, OK, I will tell you about pronunciation and how to practice it. I will also teach you techniques to improve your pronunciation. First, we looked at why students have problems with pronunciation. When we speak, we use muscles in our mouths. Sometimes, when you speak English, you use these muscles the same way as in your native language, which makes your pronunciation different from native speakers. This happens to many students learning English. Almost everyone has a slightly different pronunciation than they should. Usually, people understand you even if your pronunciation is not perfect. However, you can work on it and make it better with a great technique called shadowing. Shadowing is very simple. You copy the sound you hear. Children learn their first language by copying their parents repeatedly until their pronunciation becomes perfect. You can learn English pronunciation the same way. Take videos or audio recordings that are not too fast and that you understand well. Listen and copy what you hear. That's all. Then our teacher went to YouTube and searched for the shadowing technique. She found good videos demonstrating it well. We watched the video and then tried shadowing for about three minutes. Our teacher told us shadowing is also good when preparing for a presentation in English. If you want good pronunciation before the presentation, go to a place where you are alone and shadow for about 10 minutes. You will see how much it helps you. This was interesting for me. I had never heard of this technique before. When the lesson finished, I went to the school reception and asked the lady if there were any sports activities at school. I wanted to do some sport in England. The lady said yes, they had a table tennis team and a football team. The football team had training that day at 5 o'clock. I was very happy because sport is very important in my life. I went to the football team training and met many players from different countries, Brazil, Japan, Russia, Spain, Argentina, and Italy. 
I liked the training and was happy that my time in England started well. I had a great teacher and new friends from my football team. The next day, I would start my job. On Thursday, I went to school again. We had a new student in our class, Elizabeth, from Italy. At the beginning of the lesson, our teacher asked Elizabeth some questions. My teacher knew Elizabeth because she visited her class one year ago. It was a class for beginners and lasted only two weeks during the summer holiday. When Elizabeth spoke, her pronunciation was beautiful and fluent. My teacher was very happy and told Elizabeth, your school in Italy must be very good. Elizabeth said, I don't go to any school. I learn English at home. I use techniques I learn from you. I read, shadow, and think aloud. I try to think more in English than in Italian. This is how I work on my English. The two weeks I spent last summer in your class helped me a lot. You showed me the way. I know how to work on my English every day. This is why I wanted to join your class again. One year ago, I was a beginner, and now I can speak English. I want to learn from you again. My teacher was very happy to hear this and appreciated Elizabeth's hard work. It was interesting for me. I already knew about reading and the shadowing technique, but Elizabeth also spoke about thinking aloud. I didn't know what it was, so I asked our teacher. She replied, it is a very effective technique. You need strong motivation to learn English if you want to benefit from this technique. It might seem a little crazy to some people. But if you start thinking aloud, your English can improve quickly. I said, I have strong motivation. I don't care if the technique is crazy. If it helps, I want to learn it. Can you teach us this technique? Okay, it is very simple. You think in your native language all the time. Now you can start thinking in English and then think aloud. You simply say aloud what you are thinking. It is very simple. Why is it effective? Maybe you can ask Elizabeth. She used this technique after I told the teacher about my confusion. She smiled and said, Don't worry, Ariel. Many students have the same question. There are different ways to determine your level of English but one effective method is through vocabulary tests. These tests can estimate how many words you know and suggest which level you might be at. Intrigued, I asked, how can I take one of these tests? Our teacher replied, I can recommend a few websites where you can take free vocabulary tests. One of the best ones is testyourvocab.com. They have a simple test that can give you a good estimate of your vocabulary size. Why don't you try it tonight and let us know the results tomorrow? I nodded, feeling excited about the idea. The lesson continued with us practicing more speaking exercises. We paired up and talked about various topics, from our favorite books to places we'd like to visit. It was fun and engaging and I felt more confident with each sentence I spoke. After school, I went straight to the cafe for my job. My boss, Maria, greeted me with a warm smile. Hi, Ariel. Ready for another busy day? Yes, Maria. I'm ready, I replied enthusiastically. Working at the cafe was becoming easier and I enjoyed interacting with the customers. It was a great way to practice my English in a real-world setting. That evening, after work, I went back to my small apartment and turned on my computer. I found the website our teacher had mentioned and took the vocabulary test. It took about 15 minutes, and when I finished, 
The results showed that I knew approximately 2,000 words. According to the website, this put me at an intermediate level. I felt a sense of accomplishment. My hard work was paying off, but I knew there was still much more to learn. The next day at school, I shared my results with the class. Our teacher was pleased and said, that's a great start, Ariel. Now that you know your level, you can use more targeted materials to improve your English. In the following weeks, our lessons continued to be dynamic and interactive. One day, we focused on idioms and expressions. Our teacher explained that idioms are phrases where the meanings aren't obvious from the individual words. She gave us examples like, break the ice, and a piece of cake. We practiced using these idioms in sentences, and it was both challenging and fun. On another occasion, we had a lesson about phrasal verbs. Our teacher explained that phrasal verbs are verbs combined with prepositions or adverbs that create new meanings, like, give up, or, look after. Understanding phrasal verbs was crucial because they are very common in everyday English. One day after class, Elizabeth approached me. Hey, Ariel, some of us are planning to visit the British Museum this weekend. Would you like to join us? I was thrilled by the invitation. I'd love to. I've heard so much about it, but haven't had the chance to go yet. Saturday came quickly, and a small group of us met at the museum entrance. Elizabeth, a few other classmates, and I spent the day exploring the vast exhibits. We saw ancient artifacts from Egypt, Greece, and Rome. Elizabeth, being a history enthusiast, explained many interesting details about the exhibits. It was a fantastic day, and I felt grateful for the new friendships I was forming. As the weeks turned into months, my English continued to improve. I was becoming more confident in my speaking and writing skills. I also noticed that my understanding of idioms and phrasal verbs was getting better. On Friday, our teacher announced that we would have a small test the following week to assess our progress. Don't worry, it's not a formal exam, she reassured us. It's just to see how much you've learned and what areas we need to focus on. I decided to prepare by reviewing my notes and doing extra reading. I read an interesting book about London's history, which not only helped me learn new vocabulary, but also gave me a deeper appreciation for the city I was living in. The day of the test arrived. We were given a mix of reading comprehension, vocabulary, and writing tasks. I found the reading section particularly enjoyable because it included a short story with several idioms and phrasal verbs. The writing task asked us to describe a memorable experience in London, so I wrote about our visit to the British Museum. After the test, our teacher collected our papers and said she would have them graded by the next lesson. Over the weekend, I felt a mix of nervousness and excitement. I wondered how well I had done and what feedback I would receive. Monday finally came, and as promised, our teacher handed back our graded tests. Ariel, she said, smiling as she handed me my paper. You've made excellent progress. Keep up the good work. I looked at my test and saw that I had scored well. The feedback was encouraging, pointing out my strengths and suggesting areas for improvement. I felt a deep sense of satisfaction and motivation to continue working hard. After school, I met up with some classmates at a nearby cafe. We discussed our results and shared tips on how to improve further. Elizabeth suggested starting a small study group where we could practice speaking and help each other with difficult concepts. We all agreed that it was a great idea. 
The next day, we had our first study group meeting. We decided to focus on practicing speaking skills, so we chose various topics to discuss. Each person had a turn to lead the conversation, and we gave each other constructive feedback. It was a supportive environment, and I could feel my confidence growing with each session. One evening, I received a message from one of the women I had met on the train months ago. Her name was Jane, and she invited me to visit her in her hometown. She said it would be a great opportunity to practice my English in a different setting and experience more of England. Excited by the prospect, I accepted her invitation. The following weekend, I took a train to Jane's town. She welcomed me warmly and introduced me to her family. They were all very kind and patient with my English. We spent the weekend exploring the town, visiting local markets, and even going for a hike in the countryside. It was a wonderful experience, and I felt my English improving as I used it in different contexts. Jane's family was very encouraging, and they complimented me on how much my English had improved since we first met. Back in London, I continued with my classes, work, and study group. Each day brought new challenges and opportunities to learn. I discovered that learning a language is not just about memorizing words and rules, but also about immersing oneself in the culture and everyday life of the people who speak it. As I reflected on my journey, I realized how far I had come since that first train ride when I could barely understand the woman sitting opposite me. Now, I was able to have meaningful conversations, understand idioms and phrasal verbs, and even think in English. One day, our teacher announced that we would have a special project. Each student had to prepare a short presentation on a topic of their choice. We were encouraged to use all our learned techniques, including shadowing, thinking aloud, and incorporating idioms and phrasal verbs. I decided to do my presentation on the history and cultural significance of tea in England. I spent hours researching and preparing my notes. I practiced my presentation by shadowing to improve my pronunciation and intonation. I felt a bit nervous but also excited on the day of the presentation. When it was my turn, I took a deep breath and started speaking. To my delight, the words flowed naturally, and I felt confident. My classmates and teacher listened attentively, and when I finished, they applauded warmly. Our teacher gave me positive feedback, praising my pronunciation and the interesting content of my presentation. I felt proud of myself and grateful for all the support I had received from my teacher and classmates. As the course drew to a close, I reflected on my time in London. I had made significant progress in my English, formed lasting friendships, and experienced the richness of British culture. I knew that my journey of learning English was far from over, but I felt well equipped to continue improving and achieving my goals. On the last day of class, we had a small celebration. We shared our favorite memories from the course, exchanged contact information, and took photos together. Our teacher gave each of us a certificate of completion and a personal note of encouragement. I felt a mix of emotions as I said goodbye to my classmates and teacher. I was sad to leave but also excited for the future. I knew that I would carry the lessons and memories from this experience with me wherever I went. As I walked through the streets of London one last time, I thought about how much I had grown and learned. I had come to this city as a beginner in English, and now I was leaving with confidence and a deeper understanding of the language and culture. My journey was not just about learning English but also about discovering myself building resilience, and embracing new experiences.
I was grateful for every moment and looked forward to the adventures that lay ahead. Hi friends, I hope you enjoyed this story. You can use these methods in the story to improve your English too. Thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more tips on how to improve your English.